Hey there, it's Izzy here. Welcome to my tutorial on Final Cut Pro. I'm a huge fan of Final Cut Pro. I've been using it for more than 10 years for both personal and professional projects. I absolutely love it. In a lot of ways, you could say it's changed my life. My goal with this tutorial today is to help you get comfortable using the software to get up and running with it. And if you've never used Final Cut Pro before, that's totally fine. If you've never done any video editing of any sort before, that's totally fine. This should still be useful to you. The first thing I want to do is just a little bit of housekeeping. I want to show you the version of Final Cut Pro I'm using for these videos. I'll go to the Final Cut Pro menu, choose About Final Cut Pro. You can see the version is 10.4.3. If the version that you have on your computer is different from this, maybe you're watching this in the future and there's been some updates, usually that's okay. A lot of times there's bug fixes and new features added here or there. Every once in a while Apple will do a total and complete overhaul of the whole interface, but most of the information in these videos should still apply. Okay, I'm gonna close this window down and then I'm gonna close Final Cut Pro completely because there's something else I wanna show you here. So I'll close Final Cut. I'm gonna, in the Finder, I'm gonna go to File, New Finder Window. I'm gonna go to my Downloads folder, and you can see there's a file here in my downloads called Izzy Video Practice Media. This zip file contains all of the practice media that I'm gonna be using as I build this project today. So if you wanna follow along, get that kind of hands-on experience along with me as you watch the videos and actually use the same media you see me using, you're welcome to download this. You can get it from my website, izzyvideo.com forward slash practice dash media. You can download it and unzip it and then use the same media you see me using. Of course, this is optional. You don't need to do this. But if you want to follow along, get the hands-on experience, then maybe it's something you want to do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this file. I'm going to move it to my desktop. And I'll close this Finder window. And then what I'll do is I'll double-click on this to automatically unzip it. The operating system will do that for me. It should only take a moment. I'll grab this folder, move it over. I'm gonna double click on it to go inside of it. You can see here are the clips that we're going to be using today. So there's video clips, there's photos, there's audio files. We're gonna use all this to create this fun project. Okay, I'll close this down. And the next thing I wanna do is I wanna open Final Cut Pro again, but I wanna do it in a very specific way because I wanna reset the preferences back to their defaults. If you want your Final Cut Pro to look like mine, this might be something you wanna to do too. If you do wanna do it, here's how you do it. You hold down Command and Option on the keyboard. So I'm holding both of those keys down on the keyboard at the same time. And then I'm going to open Final Cut Pro while I'm holding those keys down. So here we go, I'll open this up. It says, do you wanna delete the preferences? In my case, yes I do. So I'm gonna delete the preferences, get it back to their defaults. You might see a window like this pop up, what's new in Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna click the Continue button. And then just for a moment, I'm gonna minimize Final Cut Pro. I'll click the little yellow minimize button here, and I'm going to delete this file. This is a diagnostic file that gets added to your desktop when you reset the preferences, but we don't need it. So I'm just gonna control click or right click on it and choose move to trash. And then I'll open Final Cut Pro back up again. And there's another little thing I wanna do. I'm gonna go up to the Apple menu, go to system preferences. I'll go to the general section. And then here where it says show scroll bars, I wanna make sure it's set to always. This is one of the most common questions people ask me and that is how can you get these scroll bars in the interface to always be showing up? Well, this answers that question. Just make sure this is set to always. I'm gonna close this down. And now let's start taking a look at Final Cut Pro. You can see over here on the left side, there's a section here that's called the Libraries Sidebar. And this is where you see a list of the different libraries that you have open. A library is sort of like a package file where it keeps track of all of the different video clips and events and all your different versions of your edits and that sort of thing. So what happens is when I'm working on a video project, I create a new library for every single project I work on. That way everything's all self-contained in one thing. What I'm gonna do is close down the Untitled Library. I'll control click or right click on it and choose close. It's a good idea to close libraries that you're not actively using that helps free up resources on your computer. So I'm gonna choose close library and then I'll go create a new library, a, a new one from scratch for this new project. I'll go to file new and then library. I'm gonna call it story of her hair library. And then by default, it wants to save it in the movies folder, but I'm gonna click on this button here and navigate to a new location. I'll go to my desktop and then I'll create a new folder on my desktop. I'll click on the new folder button. I'll call it story of her hair project. And then I'll click create. That creates that new folder. And it looks like I have a little bug showing here. So I'm going to move this over so I can see my save button. There it is. So what I'll do is I'll save the story of her hair library inside the new folder that I just created on my desktop. And this is something I do all the time when I'm creating a new project. I start by creating a new folder and a new library. And I put that library inside the project folder. I'll click save. And now I want to very quickly import media, the practice media, into this library so we can start using it. There's a lot of different ways to import media, but what I'm gonna do is just show you a very fast way to do it. And we're gonna start by changing an import preference. So I'll go to the Final Cut Pro menu, 
preferences and then go to the import section and where it says files i'm going to make it say copy to library storage location this will copy the media the video clips the audio files the photos it'll copy it into the library storage location so in this case it's going to bundle it up with the library i'm going to uncheck keywords we'll talk about keywords later but for now i don't want to have those checked okay so i've made those changes to the preferences i'll close this down i'm going to command tab command tab is a keyboard shortcut for switching between apps i'm going to hit command tab on the keyboard to go to the finder I'll select the finder and I'll open a new finder window and then I'll go to my desktop, which I'm there already. Here's that Izzy Video Practice Media folder. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and drag this folder directly onto this event. An event is sort of like a folder inside of a library. I think of it as a folder. And so you can put your media clips inside there. And that's what we're going to do to import. So I'm just going to click it and drag it here and then let go on three, two, one. It's going to start the import process. And you can see there's this little progress indicator here. And now when I switch back to Final Cut Pro, here are the different clips that we're going to be using as we create our project. So this is the source footage. I'm going to take a moment to rename this event. You can see by default, it's just today's date as I'm recording this. It's July 19th, 2018. I'm going to click on the event and then I'll just click on it a second time here to get into the editing mode. And I'm just going to call this media and then hit return. So you can rename an event. You can have a whole bunch of different events. You could have one event for photos, another event for video clips, another event for audio, another event to store the different versions of your project as you're editing. So you can use events sort of like folders to help organize your library. By the way, I should also mention you can rename your library in a similar way. So I could click on the library itself and then click on it a second time. That gets me into the editing mode and then I could change the name. I'm gonna hit return because I actually don't wanna change the name right now. I'll just hit return. If you want to clean up your interface and not see everything associated with a library that's inside that library, then you can just click the little disclosure triangle here that twirls it up and I can click it again to twirl it back down. And then lastly, I'll select my media event. Now that we have all of these elements imported into our Final Cut Pro library, in the next video, let's take a whirlwind tour of the interface.